This is the third uh, Sunbonnet Sue design that I want to digitise. I'm just going to whip over the graphics mode of my digitizer design programme because, as you know, I bring things in as a PDF. And while we're waiting for that to do that, I'm going to explain to you that this time I'm going to move quite quickly in it because um, the first two characters that you will see in a few parts up on the YouTube website, uh, they take you through every single step of the way, OK? Uh, but uh, this third one, I've asked the person that I'm working with to, to kind of teach, you know, as, as I go along. And I've asked her, as this is a fairly easy design, to do it all by herself, given the knowledge that she's already gleaned. And then we'll look at our, both of our end results. She's, she's done hers independently. I'm going to quickly do mine and then we're going to look at both results and, and see where uh, she may have picked something better than me. Uh, I may have picked something better than her and, and we're just, you know, this is an exercise really in, okay, we've done it twice, now go do it yourself, all right? So I gotta, as I say, this is going to be a very quick run through. The only thing that's going to hold me up is waiting for the damn computer. Uh, what else can I tell you? Uh, this is a very simple design again. So I'm just going to go and... Uh, file import when it when it's uh, settled itself come on file oh is there anything I, I'd love to do in the world is make computers faster still waiting come on let me open the file damn thing will you file Ah, uh, we can go. Right, file. Import. I'm going to go up to where I know Sunbonnet Sue is. Uh, that was bedtime, but I want to go down to uh, a PDF that I know has got the dog on it, right? Because I know this one is going to have the dog. So I'm just opening that one. And I'm waiting for it to come up and show me a preview. There. So I'm looking at this. It's one of one. That's the preview. Hmm. Looks pretty good to me. So I'm importing that. Okay. As curves. Okay. Yeah. And I've just clicked enter. So it's going to stick it right bang in the middle of my A4 piece of paper. Right. I'm just going to zoom out a bit. A little bit. Because as I said to you before, I'll go to crop. I don't want all of it. I want as least as I need. Yeah. So making a view that I am uh, away from the external lines uh, equally. So I'm about that far away from the edge of her dress. So I need to be about that far away from the dog. Top and bottom looks to me to be a bit further with the, with the nose of the dog. Uh, top and bottom seem to be correct, uh, you know, there's as much distance there as there is there, there's as much distance there as there is there, so she is centralised, if you like, in my um, <sighs> crop box. So it's it again, and that's cropped now. Okay, so if I go to my pickup tool, as you can see, that's, that's my crop shape, yeah? I'm just going to go and, well, it doesn't really matter what I do now. I just want that. So I will go up to bitmaps, convert to bitmap from a PDF to bitmaps, accept everything as it says it should be. OK, then go and hit uh, embroidery, not convert, that's automatic, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to hit the embroidery and that's going to switch me back to the embroidery mode of the digitizer version 5.5 Janome. Um, if you've got Coral SE or Coral 8 within um, Hatch 2, which has been linked then you can do exactly the same thing with that uh, so there we are this was the hoop I was using I'm going to take that off that hoop I am uh, although I know the pictures there because there it is but uh, <coughs> I'm going to click on it and press D on my keyboard 
because if you remember, uh, the last thing I did was press D to disappear artwork, so now I need to press D to display artwork. All right, so there she is, right bang there, and I'm going to collect her up. I'm going to go down to layout and auto center to work area. Yeah, and as you can see by the box that it's drawn, that wasn't centralized, so I'm going to hit enter, which will move the picture down there. Now I know it's centralized. Now I come over to the icon over here telling me what the pick it up, come over to the icon that was telling me what it is and hit the lock. There is a shortcut, you can highlight it and click L. That's another sh keyboard shortcut, but sometimes I just prefer to do it my own way. Now she's only reporting as four by four. So sh this is a very small one. Does it, she doesn't need to be done on a great big 12 and a half inch square, which is unusual. All right, now, I, my plan is, I do want to do these uh, on the big square. But no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it to the confines of the programme. So this could actually fit on a six and a half inch square, couldn't it? So I'm going to do it that way to start with and, then, and I'll come back and revisit it afterwards if I want to make it bigger I can and you know there's another option. So here we go. Uh, so looking at it, what's the first thing that springs to mind? Number one, I'm going to press naught. So that brings it up nice and big in front of me. It's at 93% now. But as you can see, it. oh no, it, I beg your pardon, that is me being daft. That's four inches that way, important. so she is eight by eight, so that's fine, I'm going to leave that. Good job I left it as it was, wasn't it? So, uh, first things first, what's the underneath bit? Well, as we did before, it is going to be the, the hand and the foot. And I am going to stay within the same mode, and I'm going to pick uh, this flesh colour for her hand and her feet, and I'm going to go up to a plique, and I'm going to hit digitise plique. It's going to bring me up my effects, my everything over here. I'm saying it's pre-cut, so I don't need a tap down line. So none on the tap down line. It's not going to be satin. I'm going to do this blanket. I'm going to change this one to 0 0.120. Okay, and I'm going down to the second one, the width, and I'm going to highlight that. And I'm going to say that's 0 0.80. Those are the settings that I like, and I know those are the settings that work for me. I'm on my pink. I'm ready to go. I'm going to just bring it up nice and big and start here and left right click start left click to curve right click the corners so well, anywhere you're not happy go back and hit enter to close right so that's that done one. I'm going to come back out and say, well, where's the next bit then? Oh, yeah, here it is. So I'm pressing B on my keyboard, which allows me to draw a block around the bit I really want to see, brings it up nice and close. Again, the same stitch, same stitch. Everything is the same over here. So I'll just start here. So that's that done. So that's two pieces done. Okay, so what's the next thing that we need to do is obviously I would say the dress. So I don't know what colour I'm going to do the dress, so I'm just going to pick one. This, my girl has not had anything red yet, so I am I'm going to go digitise and I'm going to pick red. So now I've got red in this corner and I'm just going to bring it up a bit bigger because it will uh, scroll with me as I do things. Okay. Bit of a curve on there. Hit enter. So that's my third done. And I am going to keep her arm the same colour as well. I don't know why, but lately I, I you know, I could do a different colour, but I think I will do it the same colour. So again, I'm just going to start there and curve. All around. And hit 
enter so that's her arm done and the next thing is I'm going to do a yellow hat this time again and I've done a yellow hat before so this brings her back into focus so it's going to match some other um, elements that we've done on, on the other sunbonnet suits okay so again I am just uh, right clicking the straight um, left clicking, clicking the curves Oops. No, I'm going back. Didn't like that. Didn't like the way that could. I hit enter. So now I've got my yellow on the curves. Okay. So basically, that's her done. Uh, moving on, the next thing I want to do is the dog. Well, I'm going to do a black dog. Uh, yeah. I'm going to do a black dog, so I got a black dog, why not do a black dog? So the first thing I'm going to do is start here, nope, changed my mind, not going to do it as a PK. Okay, let me just stop there for a second and give it a thought. I want to do the dog in black uh, and I'm going to digitise the dog in black, so I'm coming down, it's going to be two close shapes, um, let me see. So, close shape uh, which is a fill up here and I'm gonna leave it on I'm gonna put it on tatami for now okay so uh, again I am just putting B on my keyboard which allows me to bring it up nice and big so <clears throat> starting now uh, in black this size close shape into tatami and away we go so from the tail, and I'm stopping at the collar, because that's going to be another colour, so I don't want to mess the collar around too much. So that's the tutami on the bottom part and above the collar I'm just going to continue and I'm just going to lay down crikey and then two rounded I don't know why. Oh, back because I want to hit enter. So I just want to do the doggy bit, okay? Now, so that's that for one minute. Uh, the next thing I want to do is the collar. And uh, if I bring the picture out, I think either a yet no, or I'm going to make him a boy dog. So he's going to have a blue. He's going to have a nice blue. I've changed the colour down here now. Blue, this tries to close shape. Again, I'm still on the fill, still on tatami, so I'm just going to hit B on my keyboard and bring that area up nice and big so I can see it again and start there. And I take into account this time pull compensation. So I am just going to go, can you see, I am just following the line, but a little bit into the black. That's We talked about pull compensation because now we've got quite a large area of two types of embroidery right next to each other. So I have literally just gone over a teeny bit of the black. So that's that bit done. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is think about, well, uh, the lead. Now what should we do for the lead? Uh, the lead, I don't want it in red because that's going to... I want the lead. What colour would a dog like a lead? I want it in brown. So I'm going to take a nice uh, lightish brown and say, well, now I'm going to do it in brown, but this time I want it to be an outline in, and I want it to be an open shape because it is just a line. Single run, I'm going to go for uh, satin stitch, okay? And I'm just going to make the line from here down. And 
water okay now I bring that out that's quite a, that's quite thick for me okay so I go and highlight that and I'm gonna say well I don't want it to be <coughs> I'm working in inches by the way I'm always, at the moment I'm working in inches so if you need to click off everything and up here you will see it will come a measurement so you can change the metric to, to US so <coughs> I'll click back on my thing and now you know I'm working in inches so 118 was too much for me so I'm going to come down to about 80. Let's see what 80 looks like. So that is 0.80, okay? Ooh. <laughs> undo that. Up here, you've got undo buttons. Undo that, because that is not what I want to do. That's the width. I want to do... What did I do wrong then? It should have gone smaller. Yeah. No, I must have missed the decimal point out. Yeah, I must have missed the decimal point out. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna just whiz back out using my mouse wheel. Press naught so I get it in the centre. Yeah, actually that's quite that is uh, wide enough for me. So I'll just press B on my keyboard and go back in and highlight that again because I don't want to say it's I, I want it to be satin, but I also want it to be three D satin. So if I collect it up, uh, all kinds of things change, and I can now say. Uh, yeah, what I'm actually going to do now is uh, I am going to take a motif line. I've just changed things. I'm going to come back over here and say well, I'm digitizing an open shape, uh, same color, but I'm going to take a motif line and come down to my uh, stuff where Candlewick in M Gallery, Phil Designs M Gallery, I think. And I'm going to look at this and I want something that's just going to give me. Yeah, I'm going to pick up that star. <clears throat> okay and I am now going to highlight this bring it up and follow the same line through the centre hopefully of my lead hit enter now you see I've got those stars on it well that's, that's good but uh, as you know with everything I've just moved myself out of the way we can now uh, highlight that that's that secondary line and we can take the width and the height and bring them down so that they're more oh, up a little bit so they're more centered on that line and then the spacing we can bring down Yeah, so that's come together a bit more. I'm going to take True View off so that I can go in and say, well, hang on a moment, uh, that line, the pink one, is not... I'm going to reshape, go up to reshape. That pink line is not entirely... You see, it's not entirely centralised on the original. just want to slightly you see these these connecting dots uh, so I move in my points and you see how I'm bringing them back in more have I got one there yeah they get bigger and bigger you can see it I'm bringing them back more in line with with the under stitching yeah now I'm going to put true view back on yeah and come right back out yeah now they're coming down the lead in in a better fashion okay so that's just a little bit of way that you can embroidery I'll click I'll come to select so that disappears and come off it so that uh, there we are my lines have gone so now you can see that that is following that in a more true nature so that's the way that i want to do the um lead over the top now the next bit i want to do is i want to um i'm just going to change the order these two up behind in front well when i say up in uh, above that blue collar because i didn't like the way that that ended so starkly so uh, as i if i sew that first then it will come beneath this blue but i'm going to highlight the blue now because i don't like that and i want to go for satin 
uh, it is a fill stitch so I think what I might do is go and try an embossed fill stitch so I'm going to pick that one which will give me a load more oh that's quite nice but I will give me a lot more options uh, let's come down and use something a little different this is for its collar diamonds that's quite nice oh yes little diamond collar I quite like that. I'm not going to change the size or anything of that because actually I quite like it. So I'm just going to go and hit save here at this point because I know I like that bit. All right. So that's that. Now the next thing I want to do uh, is his, I, I want to deal with his back and his head. And this is an, another, I'm highlighting it. It's Satami and I'm going to go to effects. It is a fill. My computer will just catch up with me and I'm going to go right up to the top of the fill and you can see here we've got something called a feather edge now this feather edge will do one side or both sides or if you bring it down we'll do the other side so let's see how we go I'm going to click first of all on one side now you see how that is flaking it out a little bit that's just one side so maybe not let's do both sides so now you can see that's just flaking it out a little bit but here we have uh, uh, some some things that we can use that to control this. So that's 118. I'm going to say, no, actually, I want you to go a bit bigger. Mm-hmm. No, I don't. I want you to go back to where you were, 118. And the raggedness, I think I bring up to medium. And I'm looking at it and I think, mm, I don't know. So the other thing I'm going to do is go to reshape, which always gives me the angle. Now, when you change angles on things, yeah, yeah, mm, I don't know. And this is this is where it's down to the user's eye to mess with it. I might change. I, I'm going to go back and it's a fill effect, which was to Tommy, but I think I'm going to pick a different fill effect, which is more like uh, that one that we've used before, which is more like teddy bear type uh, thing. And uh, not happy. I don't know, I'm thinking that uh, actually a dog's coat grows downwards, isn't there? Yay. Yay, now that's better because I just suddenly thought, hang on, a dog's coat grows. So I'm going to go back to my effects and say, well, I don't need it medium now. I'm bringing it back to low. Yeah? And I'm going to drop that down a little bit. That's better. That's better. Yeah, could play with a bit more, but I like that. Uh, so if I if I just uh, click off of that, set, hit select and click off of that, can you now see uh, from? Oh, I've lost it again. Naught. Uh, and I will press B and bring it up bigger. But can you now see the overall effect? Is I've made his coat a bit more shaggy looking rather than being this flat. I've made it. I've changed the angle so. You know, the hair does grow downwards, to be honest, doesn't it? So I've changed it and I've made it look a bit more shaggy by using these feather edges. Now, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is pick up the headpiece, yeah? And all I need to do now, well, no, let's go back, pick up the body piece on the right-hand side, copy object properties, yeah? On the headpiece now, pick up the headpiece and to the side, apply object properties so what we just did on the body is now happened entirely on the head and i'm going to click off that and hit save all right so so you you, you know that obviously at this stage uh, we want the head to be stitched in the same manner as the body all right so the next thing i need to do now is i'm going to go and pick up that head again and to the right of it i'm going to click right and i'm going to go hide selected now what that did was just get rid of the stitching. It's still there, but it's blanked out so you can see it's hidden. So what I want to do uh, 
it's a bit difficult with this. I put a blue eye in, a white eye in, what should I do? Uh, uh, a brown eye in, but that won't show very well, would it? But a light brown eye might show, might show, yeah. So, now I'm going to make a, a blue eye. So I come back to this blue, picked it up again, and I'm just going to go to circle oval and right, make it nice and big, right in the middle, hit that, Move it across, click it again and move it up. I'm going to make it slightly bigger than it was and then hit enter. It's on motif, that's daft. I wanted it to be on, so I'll just, I'll just uh, pick it up and change it to fill, yeah? And say I want it satin fill. Uh, and mm, I'm going to reshape because that didn't come out too well, did it? Pick it up, uh, reshape, yeah, I don't know why, but that uh, did not come out too well, no, undo, 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 and back to where we were, so I'm going circle oval, I'm in blue, I want it satin, I'm going to change my thing before I do it, and then go, yeah, I want it like that, click, like that, click, and hit enter. Mm, it's not liking it, so I'm going back to effects and saying, uh, oh, remove effect, it may still have the feather on it. Yeah, so I'm going to just pick it up again and remove effect. There we go. It still had the feather effect from what I did last time. I wonder what was wrong with it, and that was what, so I needed to remove that effect because this program thinks that you're going to do everything the way you just did the last one and it doesn't, does it? So the next thing I can do is go over here, uh, hit the head, hit the side of it and say, uh, <coughs> unhide all. So there, now the head comes back up. I'll just move the picture right back out to 100%. Um, so now you can see I have actually given him a little blue eye. Uh, so, um, yay. I am able to do the black, the black, the brown, the brown, the uh, the blue, the blue. So that suits me. So in some respects, you could say, well, that's that, that picture finished. But to me, it, it, it needs a little something extra. So I am going to just run over to uh, digitize. No, I'm going to go to advanced applique and say, give me a motif stamp. I need a motif stamp. I don't want anything that's too ridiculous, but I do want something. No, I, I don't think I'll do it there. M gallery, that's okay, cancel. I am going to go and say digitize. Uh, I don't mind that this connects. This will connect, but I don't mind that it connects. Uh, digitize, open shape, pick up a motif line. I don't want that one. Uh, I want to go and look for something that's not door. not too heavy I mean you you can detach this and you know you can literally detach it and, and look at it bigger uh, we used that one before what do we want to use this time I don't want it to be too heavily satiny stitched I want it to be a basic outline so I could just say uh, that one just a scroll motif, okay? And I'm going to just draw a line, making it circular, following the line of a dress underneath. Yeah? There we go. So, that, yeah, that's very nice. And I can change colours, and <coughs> it's going to be yellow. So, again, on top of yellow, I could use white. That's changed to white. And using exactly the same motif, I am just going to follow round a little circle and say, well, I'm going to have that motif on her hat as well. All right? So, that's just made it a little bit more interesting. Very, very quick, but it's made it a little bit more interesting. So, now I'll hit save. Yep. Uh, I'll get rid of by just uh, highlighting the artwork and hitting uh, D for disappear. So get rid of the artwork. So that's our little girl finished, ready to save uh, as onto my thumbnail as JPX. So I'm ready to save as a Jeff file, which I will use to cut out 
the um, shapes on my cutting machine as well. So that's, that's my bit finished. Okay. <laughs>